I'm Dirk Helbing from ETH Zurich. I'm working in the area of complexity science and I'm the scientific coordinator of Future ICT. So Future ICT, or Futurist as we call our flagship project, is a response to European flagship call. And they want to address really big problems with a substantial amount of money in order to get Europe forward to promote innovation and so on. We are addressing in particular in this project the techno-socioeconomic challenges in the 21st century. Today we are understanding a lot about our physical world and about our universe. Also we have invested a lot in understanding our environment. But so far there is a lack of understanding of socio-economic systems. This is what we are addressing. We want to understand and learn how to manage in a sustainable way socially interactive systems. This is society on the one hand but also information and communication systems of the future. Take the Japanese disaster as an example. We can understand actually what would happen most likely when an earthquake strikes. We know that can cause tsunamis. We know that it will destroy infrastructure. So it will be very difficult uh, for emergency vehicles, for example, to, uh, to get into uh, the areas that were hit by the disasters communication breaks down, there may be medical problems and all these kind of things. But we also know that it has secondary effects, for example, on politics. And so already directly after this disaster, I said that will have impact on politics in Europe. And by now, actually, we've seen that the energy policy has changed in Germany and Switzerland. It may change in other countries as well. So you can see all things are somehow coupled. Environmental change has an impact on economic change. Economic change um, produces social change. People may migrate, that may cause conflict and all these kind of things. So everything is interconnected, that makes things so difficult, that requires new tools. So there's a reason why we don't understand social systems to the same degree as we understand our physical world. There are so many interactions between individuals, those create complexities through interactions, but also there is cognitive complexity on the other hand. So that means all the neurons in our brain are influencing our behavior. On top of that, memory plays a role and even the interpretation of a single word can change the world. That's something we don't know from other systems. A business as usual approach will not work at all over here because the world has changed quickly through a number of factors such as globalization, technological change, demographic change, environmental change and so on and so on. Those changes have been much faster than science managed to catch up in their understanding of systems of this complexity. The challenges of the humanity in the 21st century are so big that no single institution, no single country can actually address them by themselves. So we need a federated effort and also we need to put together the best knowledge of many different disciplines, such as in particular computer science and information and communication technologies, complexity science and social sciences including economics and political sciences and so on and so on. So we want to create something 
like a flight simulator for policy and economics because we're using supercomputers these days in all areas when we're designing a new car, a new airplane, also medical trucks, of course supercomputers are being used for that. So far we don't have similar tools for politics and economics. We also call this the Living Earth platform. That consists of a number of different components. So on the one hand it contains so-called interactive observatories that I would also even call exploratories because their purpose is to mine data and explore possible futures. By large-scale computer simulation, actually global-scale simulation. And then, of course, that requires a lot of data, massive amounts of data in real time. And these data will be created by reality mining. And for that, we'll uh, form basically a planetary nervous system that can be imagined as a sensor network where sensors is anything that collects data about techno socioeconomic systems. So we'll create kind of realistic copies of our real world, we simulate them, but people can use them such as you know, second life, but the more realistic, a more serious version of that. And we could create a number of different copies of those virtual worlds. And in this way, explore a number of different alternatives. We can also explore different kinds of financial architectures or voting systems or administrative systems and compare them, how well they operate, whether it's stable or not. This includes, for example, coming up with ICT systems of the future, which are basically socially interactive systems because they're made up of billions of components like computers and mobile phones, and they're involving users as well. So many of these components take autonomous decisions. They're non-linear in interacting. So that is a social system in principle and will have the same kinds of problems that social systems have today if they're not well constructed, such as instability, crime, conflict, war, and so on. So if we want to make sure that the ICT system will be reliable, stable, resilient, and sustainable, then it's very important actually that we understand how to design these kinds of systems. Just remember the damage that the financial crisis has caused or the huge damage that crime and corruption or disease spreading causes. So if we can mitigate those problems just by 1%, then the project would pay off already multiple times. So it's a very good investment, in fact. We actually believe we can get 10% better or even more. So every single euro we invest into that will really be beneficial for society.